Okay, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, we're, we're back with human geography again. Okay, today we're going to be co covering on um, part two, which is on challenges to sustainable development. Okay, so we're going to jump in real quick. Okay, basically this topic, we're going to be talking about um, two the examples, two prime examples. Okay, the Rio Earth Summit, as well as the Rio Plus 20. Okay, these are basically the two main examples you need to know for this topic and understand what are the challenges that these two um, summits actually face which is the re reason why sustainable development is actually very hard to achieve. Okay, so if we jump, if we, if we move on, okay. Firstly, we'll talk about Rio Earth Summit, okay, the 1992 UN Conference on the Environment, okay. So what were some of their challenges, okay. Firstly, you need to understand what the main purpose was, okay. The main purpose was focused on how to relieve the global, the global environment system, okay. What this actually meant, okay, was how can we actually reduce, uh, reduce environmental problems to to um, the entire world okay so basically emphasize the economic right, as well as social progress okay and then um, it actually depended critically on having to actually preserve our environment okay our natural resource base right, and hence it actually introduced different measures to prevent um, this degradation okay you'll see later on okay okay so basically the main outcome of the summit was this um, agenda called Agenda 21. Okay, it's basically essentially like a document or like a policy slash um, um, measure for, for the next few years to come. Okay, so it's basically a comprehensive plan of action to achieve all areas of sustainable development. So things like your Millennium Development Goals, okay, we actually introduced over here. Okay, and this actually recommended action, okay, by your um, TNCs, okay, your NGOs, your local authorities. Okay, so it urged them to actually play a part in saving the environment. Okay, so also on the challenges. Okay, we look at it from a political standpoint first. Okay, the first challenge was that there were different viewpoints of sustainable development for the developed countries versus the less developed countries. Okay, essentially what happened was that the developed countries actually saw sustainable development as, as a um, quality of life issue, right? This is because they are more financially stable, right? More DCs out there, they are the reason why they're called DCs to begin with is because they have a certain um, uh, security for their economic wealth. Right? So in that case, when you look at sustainable development, it is more of, oh, how are my people suffering? Okay, What is the, the um, environment doing to affect my people? Which is why it became a quality of life issue. Okay, on the other hand, less developed countries actually saw um, sustainable development as a way to actually boost their economic growth okay but with greener practices okay so you notice over here that there's a subtle meaning behind this whereby they in a sense had a bit of a selfish view okay because they actually wanted to use sustainable development to enhance and to um, boost their economy instead okay so firstly you can really see that there's already different varying viewpoints that's already one challenge because they, they didn't even start out on the same page to begin with okay what else okay so another challenge that happened was that there was actually a dispute over what the actual cause for the need for sustainable development was. Okay, what does this mean? Okay, the less developed countries viewed okay, that overpopulation was actually the harmful reason why um, the environment was actually being uh, worsened. Okay, and this was actually because of increased consumption. Okay, overpopulation in LDCs is apparent, right? Their birth rates are insane. Why? Because of the poor education that they have. So as a result of this overpopulation, there's a greater need for people to consume, but with the little amount of financial resources they had, they realized that actually the environment was hence being put at risk, right? Because then there's a need to chop down more trees, for example, um, um, to in order to feed the growing population. Whereas for developed countries, can you notice that overconsumption is more harmful? Okay, why why is this so? Okay, it's because of the the huge affluence that. Um, developed countries have right affluence as in the AFF one, um, L U E N C E. Okay, developed countries actually have greater affluence. Okay, people are richer, people have more income. As a result, they tend to consume a lot, right? You just think about your, yourself, for instance, you tend to consume more, right? It's, it's it brings back to our, to our first part of this series, which you can go back to the previous episode to watch. Okay, it is the difference between perceived needs and essential needs. Okay, so as a result, there are already different, um, causes of sustainable development which the different parties felt at the beginning okay another one that actually happened was a lack of political commitment okay what does this mean okay despite all the agenda to anyone being crafted out and all that kind of, of stuff being pushed out right there's actually a lack of your regulations your legislations okay your rules 
Okay, to actually make sure that everyone enforces this practice of sustainable development. Okay, so you notice that this actually becomes very, very risky because in the end, no one really did anything, right? Which actually boils down to your next part as well. Okay, um, it's like the, as in, the next part is in your Rio plus 20. Why, the, why Rio plus 20 even came about? Okay, another challenge that they faced were economic challenges. Okay, because firstly, um, it goes without saying, right? Less developed countries, they already face great limitations because they, they don't even have a lot of financial resources to begin with. Okay, whereas your developed countries, they actually face overconsumption problems and economic growth issues. Why? Because most developed countries, okay, they actually want to focus on economic growth. So as a result of focusing on economic growth, they tend to neglect the environment at a, at, at a trade-off. Okay, we covered this in the first part. You can go back and watch that part as well. Okay, so next we move on to Rio, Rio Plus 20. Okay, why is it so important for us to actually learn this? Okay. Rio Plus 20 was actually a 2012 UN conference okay, based around the, um, sustainable development okay, as well as to actually update okay, what has actually happened in the past few years prior to, um, I mean, as in when your Agenda 21, your Millennium Development Goals were set up by your Rio Earth Summit. So it's basically kind of like a continuation from that. Okay, so what was the main purpose? Okay, it was actually to secure renewed political commitments for sustainable development. Okay, because like I just mentioned before, okay, Rio Earth Summit had one of the main challenges was that there was a lack of political a political commitment. Okay, a lot of countries did not really um, cooperate. Okay, they did not actually help to enforce sustainable development within their own countries. Okay, one more thing was basically to very simply assess the progress, okay, as well as the remaining gaps that were left behind by your Rio Earth Summit. Okay, this one is self explainable la. okay okay so what was the outcome of the summit okay there were two outcomes one of it was the um sustainable development goals okay and the second one was the concept of the green economy okay the green economy we will we'll, we'll assess what that really is later on okay firstly let's move on to the challenges first okay one of the huge challenges okay was once again your political challenges okay the first one was that there was no shared vision of what a green economy was Okay, and hence, this actually meant different things to different countries, okay, because your developed countries, they felt that, oh, wow, a green economy means that now I have to pursue cleaner and, and uh, more resource efficient or, or um, greener practices, right? Whereas for your LDCs, they always have this perspective that, oh, wow, with, with a green economy now, it means that, nice, I can actually pursue economic growth. So as a result, you notice that there's already clashing views, which is similar to your view of summit, if you actually think about it. Okay, because LDCs once again want to focus on economic growth, whereas your DCs want to focus on trying to be oh more gl- more green, you know, um because my quality of life is being affected. Okay, so you didn't notice that uh, there's no common same page that people are on in this case. Okay, another political challenge was that there was non-commitment of countries again okay, a lack of international monitoring. Okay, so even though Rio Plus Twenty actually went out, okay, and then they tried to fix this issue of political commitment. You notice that it was still a problem. Why? Now, in the 2012, okay, we're actually looking from a different perspective right here. We're looking at the standpoint of technology. Okay, DCs are way advanced in technology. LDCs are still further behind. Here, okay, less developed countries are still further behind. Okay, as a result, there was actually an urge, okay, during plus, Rio Plus 20, for DCs to actually transfer technology to LDCs to help them. Okay, but guess what? It didn't happen. Okay, because DCs have their own selfish reasons. And LDCs is, is, is a lot of government um, poor governance that, that resulted in this technology transfer not being successful. Okay, so when there's no technology transfer, key or less developed countries will always continue to remain behind. Key because they are not up to date with the latest technology. Okay, next thing, economic challenges. Okay, this one involves placing economic value on environmental services. Okay, as well, it does not consider the immediate concerns of LDCs, which is basically your malnourishment, diseases, poverty, all that kind of stuff. Okay, basically what this means, this challenge, okay, is that when you actually try and enforce, okay, this whole idea of sustainable development, a lot of people end up having the wrong misconception, okay, that you are actually saying that, oh, the environment is essentially like of economic value, which is what the LDCs view as, right? Because they view that, oh, by pursuing SD, I can actually grow my economy. So this is actually a very flawed reason, um, a very flawed thinking in a lot of countries, which is one of the huge challenges from the Rio Earth Summit. Uh, sorry, from Rio Plus 20. Okay, ignore the, the top part. This one over here should be Plus 20. Yeah? Plus 20. It's horrible. Okay. Okay, 
So now we move on to your exam requirements. Okay, what is the main things you need to know from this topic? Okay, because I know a lot of you skip this topic because why it's boring, right? Okay, but we are gonna jump in. Okay, this topic is actually if you if you really go and look at it, uh, it's actually for a bridging, it's a kinda kinda like a bridging topic for later chapters. Okay. It basically works as concrete evidence, okay, for the different needs, limitations, and trade-offs which LDCs and DCs have. So when you say certain needs or certain limitations, okay, you can quote that, oh, Rio plus 20 at Rio Earth Summit was there, okay, and there was actually uh, kind of like an international action which was enforced. However, it still didn't work, okay, why did it not work? Because of these limitations which it had, okay. And one more thing that's very important is your SDGs, okay, you'll use it a lot later in the future. SDGs are basically extremely important because they still exist till today. Okay, and so you can actually use it to monitor current progress, things like your gender equality, things like um, saving, you know, um, life in water, that kind of stuff. Okay, go and look up all your SDGs, okay, search it out online. Okay, I'll go through it another time. Okay, but basically SDGs is also a very, very key evidence that you can use for not just sustainable development, but later on you will also learn your um, your your urban, urban climates, okay, all this kind of stuff will all come in as well. Okay, so go and really learn this. Okay, your exam requirements for this topic can actually be quite important too. Okay, so if not, that will be all for this episode. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next part. Okay, um, next video could either be a um, economics uh, question analysis or it could be a economics chapter or geography QA. Okay, let me know what you guys need. Okay, and then I'll go through it um, in the next few videos to come. Okay, bye-bye.